It's one of only three vans available here in North America with three captain's chairs up front, and it's the only one that can be upgraded to the very capable Xantrex lithium battery system. We're reviewing a 2018 Coachman Galleria 24T, and we're starting right now. Hello everyone, Neil Balthaser here, and welcome to Ultra Mobility Reviews, the channel where you vote for the RVs that you want me to review each week. Make sure your voice is heard and head on over to my community tab and vote in the poll. Including the Galleria, there's only two other Class B camper vans in the market today with three captain's chairs up front, and those are the CS Adventurous by Road Trick and the Winnebago Era 70B. All of them share nearly the exact same floor plan with three captain's chairs up front, your galley midsection along the driver's side, and your bathroom across the aisle on the passenger side, and your lounge slash bedroom in the rear. But the Galleria has some tricks up its sleeve that differentiate it from its competitors. We've got a full review to cover, so let's get started with the exterior, where we're also going to talk about the 24T's chassis specs and hookups. The Galleria line is built on the extended 170-inch wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter 3500 chassis, which means this van is one of the longest Class Bs available here in North America, measuring a very long 24 feet 3 inches in length. This coach will definitely require you to take up two parking spaces. Dual rear wheels give you improved handling, which is appreciated on these longer wheel-based Sprinter chassis. The Galleria is powered by Mercedes diesel 3-liter V6 engine with a 5-speed transmission that's capable of delivering up to 188 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. It has a tow capacity of 4,200 pounds and over 2,000 pounds of occupant and cargo carrying capacity. Let's go over safety features. Coachman has opted for all the Mercedes safety upgrades, including side airbags, lane keeping assist, hill start assist, blind spot and collision detection, side wind stabilization, and auto headlights and rain sensing windshield wipers. It's a clean look on the Galleria. This is the Arctic white exterior paint color. There's also brilliant silver and black. It's very clean with just the minimal Coachman branding at the tail and the Galleria branding on the front doors. I love this sweeping expanse of dark tinted automotive style windowing along the driver's side. And as you'll see when we go into the coach, that expanse of windows is one of the highlights of the Galleria. I appreciate the permanent step up to get into the cab. I've had the electronic steps that extend and retract automatically, and they have a tendency to go out, likely because of rainwater spraying up into the electronics and wiring while driving. One trade-off, though, is that the permanent steps do stick out on both sides of the van, and you're going to scuff them on curbs. Let's take a look at hookups while we're on the driver's side. Pretty clean. There's an access panel for your exterior shower, which also strangely houses your satellite and cable TV hookups, as well as your macerator on-off switch. And then there's your Truma Combi vent in black, and that's about it for any telltale RV giveaways on this side. Your shore power is located up high, but your service center is down low between the exterior shower and Truma vent. It includes your dump station and your city water hookups, and personally, I'm not a fan of combining your sewer and freshwater hookups into a single service center. Your propane fill is located on the other side of the van directly in front of the rear wheels. Let's take a look at the driver's seating position. Here I am in the driver's seat with the seat pushed back as far as it can go. There's a refrigerator behind the driver's seat, so my seat back is reclined to its maximum extent. Now I'm 5'10", and I've got plenty of leg room, and you can see that my arms are fully extended. The steering wheel both tilts and telescopes, and the seat has height adjustment. So that means taller drivers have quite a few options for finding a comfortable driving position. Let's head inside to see how this van is laid out, and also see if there's anything that makes this van stand out from the pack. There are four floor plans available on the Galleria. The 24A, which has a permanent bed in the back, 
the 24FL, which has a front lounge, the 24Q, which has four captain's chairs up front, and finally, the floor plan that we're reviewing today, the 24T, which has three captain's chairs up front. Stepping into this coach, the first thing my eye is drawn to is that expanse of windows that virtually runs unhindered from front to back. You do have partial blockage of a window due to the refrigerator and microwave, but having this third captain's chair here in the aisle way and not a bathroom wall crowding the space really does create an open and airy feeling. I also appreciate that curved radius corner where the bathroom is on the passenger side and the matching curved radius cabinet doors. Aesthetically, this is a very pleasing coach to walk into. There are three color options available for the ultra leather on the seats and sofa, cashmere, onyx, and fog. And for your cabinets, you have high gloss maple, which you see here, or high gloss cherry. Let's take a look at the driver's seating position from the inside. Notice that there's no more room to move the seat back or recline it due to the refrigerator being pushed right up to the threshold between the coach and the cab. The dimensions are all pretty standard for a Sprinter. Very good cargo carrying capacity at over 2,000 pounds. The interior height is six foot two inches. And I appreciate that there are no step ups and there are no cabinets above the cab. So moving about in this coach is a breeze. This is a two person coach, but that extra captain's chair means that there's an extra three point seat belt. This coach comes with only a one year warranty and not listed here is one year of roadside assistance. Do take note that the dealer advertised price is $100,000 for the coach that I'm reviewing. That puts this coach in line as one of the least expensive built on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis. Let's hope its quality doesn't reflect this price. I'll speak to that at the end of the video. Let's head into the galley where we're also gonna talk about this coach's electrical system. This is not a small galley. In fact, it's one of the largest that you'll find in the Class B segment. You can find reviews of coaches that I've done which are the same length as this one with galleys half this size. You've got a huge amount of prep space and this solid surface countertop is not Corian. I believe it's Viaterra by LG, the same company that makes kitchen appliances. I like the look. You get an AC outlet there to the left and it's connected to the inverter so that you can use it without being plugged into shore power or starting your generator. Always check for that and don't assume because you see an AC outlet that it'll run off your batteries. This coach has a two burner propane stove but you can opt at no additional charge to get an induction cooktop and I'm liking this trend away from the marine style sinks with collapsible faucets to these high neck residential style faucets and this one is pushed back out of the way leaving me with plenty of counter prep space. I like all the windows and that one on the right opens awning style to help with ventilation. Speaking of which, Coachman's sensibly placed the fantastic rooftop vent with rain sensor directly between the galley and the bathroom so that it ventilates both areas. There's no lack of storage in this galley, three drawers under the sink, and that deep bottom drawer is perfect for pots and pans. A proper place for a proper trash can there under the sink and even a flip out storage space for your sponges. And I've said it before and I'm saying it again, don't underestimate having a place to store your wet sponges. Otherwise they end up in your sink where they get mildewy. There's more storage to the right of the sink and above you have two large cabinets. Coachman has hidden away all the component controls into this rightmost overhead cabinet. I really do appreciate not having to look at ugly controls when I'm sitting in my $100,000 coach. One of the selling points of the 24T is this enormous six cubic foot compressor driven refrigerator with a separate freezer. Now this refrigerator operates off of DC or AC power, so it's what we call a two-way refrigerator. Above the refrigerator is your convection microwave, and that's great news for taller folks and Maybe not so great news for people who are shorter. Let's swing the camera around and take a look at aisleway space. It's okay. Someone can probably pass by if you're working in the kitchen. This is also a great shot of the under counter lighting. 
It's a clever way to illuminate the aisle way at night and guide you to the bathroom. Okay, let's move on to the electrical system. Now standard on this coach is a single 12 volt, 330 amp hours, that's nearly 400 watt hour lead acid batteries. And that's one of the largest capacity lead acid batteries I've seen on a coach. A standard 2.5 kilowatt LP generator with automatic generator start, a good size 2000 watt inverter and 100 watts of solar. The size of the inverter means that you're going to be able to run your microwave off your battery. So a good basic standard setup with good battery capacity, solar and a good sized inverter. But there's also an upgrade path to Coachman's LI3 lithium system powered by Xantrex. The LI3 system replaces your lead acid batteries with 7200 watt hours, that's 600 amp hours of lithium batteries coupled to a 3300 watt underhood generator. The underhood generator, however, doesn't have auto start. That's a feature that Mercedes doesn't like its upfitters installing. You can upgrade your solar as well up to 300 watts for just over $1,000. The LI3 system upgrade cost is a pretty hefty $22,000 and keep in mind that you don't get any credit for components that were replaced, some of which are pretty expensive like the LP generator. So all around a good upgrade path to a very capable lithium system that has enough capacity to almost let you go all electric. And I say almost because while the Truma Combi heating system is hybrid, meaning that it can use either liquid propane or electric heating elements, heating this coach off electric in below freezing weather would drain your lithium batteries pretty quickly. In temperate weather, however, you'd be able to go all electric, no problem. Okay, let's head on into the lounge slash bedroom where we're also gonna talk about the bathroom and take a look at available options. This coach has two lounges, a front lounge and a rear lounge. A pedestal table can be set up in the front where the two cab seats swivel around and join the third captain's chair, or a rear lounge with seating for four. There's a reason why this rear sofa slash bed configuration is so popular here in North America. It works well both as a lounge and when it converts to a bed. In lounge mode, it's functional and comfortable. You've got a proper sofa that electrically reclines with head and armrests. By the way, the sofa has three lap restraints, but no three-point seat belts. The two inward facing seats can also act as ottomans for kicking your legs up. There are no seat belts, however, for these seats. A pedestal table can be set up back here and the tabletop has integrated cup holders. There's lots of windows letting plenty of light in and with dual awning style windows on each side, there's good ventilation. There are reading lights on each side and you can barely see it here, but in the corner on the driver's side, there's an AC outlet and a small grommet into the cabinet above where you can set a CPAP machine and have your hose come down through that little grommet. And that's a really nice, well thought out feature. Swinging around, you see a 24 inch LCD TV on a swing out armature and yes, it is positive locking. I do have to point out, however, that none of the drawers or cabinet doors are positive locking, unfortunately. Right above your TV is your second lighting control center and that kind of panel means this coach has multiplex wiring which centralizes lighting and other component controls into convenient touch panels like this one that can be placed anywhere inside the van. This coach features the Firefly multiplex wiring system, which gives you monitoring and remote access from your phone using a mobile app. And who doesn't want to sit around the campfire and monitor the status of your lithium batteries? Just below the TV and on the other side next to the sink, you'll see USB and DC charging centers. As far as storage, you've got cabinets above and this nifty shirt closet with adjustable shelves. Setting this area up as a bedroom is as easy as removing the headrests and pushing a button to electrically recline the sofa. Once that's done, you can then fill in the middle area with some cushions and have one large 68 by 76 inch bed or leave that middle section open and have two singles, each measuring 24 by 76 inches. Here I am on the driver's side single and even at 510, you can see that I have a lot of room to spare. People six feet and taller are going to be able to fit on this bed with no problems. 
It's nice that the bed dimensions are the same on the other side as well, so choose your side. I guess the person who may need the CPAP machine will need to be on the driver's side. Bed comfort was okay. Coachman advertises this bed as, quote, the industry's first true lay flat sofa, end quote, with no humps or gaps. Honestly, it didn't feel any different than most other electrically reclining sofa beds that I've been on. They do use memory foam, but it's not thick enough. You'll need to use a mattress topper on this bed. I do want to point out, though, that the integrated rear screen door is a standard feature, something that some other more expensive coach manufacturers charge you for. Okay, let's move on and take a look at some of the available options and their prices. Speaking of screens, the side screen door package is a very economical $398. You can get a rear hitch step for $533, although I'm not quite sure why you'd need this. A big upgrade on the 2018 model is the four-wheel drive chassis upgrade from Mercedes. That's a $10,000 upgrade. And finally, I want to remind people that I am reviewing a 2018 model year Galleria. Coachman has added a whole raft of upgrades to the 2019 model year, which I'll go over in detail when I review a 2019 Galleria. But a couple important 2019 features that aren't available on the 2018 model are the polar protection package, which wraps the water lines, which on this coach are exposed to the elements in heat tape and also adds heating pads to the bottom of your holding tanks. That upgrade makes the 2019 Galleria a true four season coach as it's been tested to 27 degrees below freezing. And also the Sumo Spring brand upgrade to the suspension system, which vastly improves the ride quality of this coach. There's some other nifty features like the phase change insulation that we talked about in the CrossFit review and four point leveling jacks and a new quiet air conditioner from Pro Air, all of which are new features and upgrades only available on the 2019 model year. So some nice options here on the 2018 model year, but Coachman is definitely stepping up their game with features and improvements in the 2019 model year. Okay, let's wrap up this review by taking a quick look at the bathroom before I give you my final recommendation. Here I am sitting in the bathroom. I've got nothing behind my head, nothing above my head. My shoulders aren't squished thanks to the way the doors are designed to flare out a few inches, and I don't feel pushed up against the sink. Speaking of the sink, I always say it, but I appreciate that Coachman has covered up all the pipes under the sink. And I also appreciate the residential style faucet that also doubles as your shower head. Now this is a wet bath, so you will be showering in here with the toilet, but it's a nice shower stall with a one piece fiberglass enclosure. There are no seams and potentials for leaks. Here I am standing and you can see that at 510, I've got good headroom. I mean, you're not really going to shower standing up in any B van, but even so you can see I've got good maneuvering room. Coachman has smartly placed a soap dispenser and mirror out of my way behind the sink, and I do appreciate the dedicated toilet paper holder with its waterproof cover. There's no dedicated ventilation in here, but the large and powerful fantastic fan is just outside the doors and will ventilate this bathroom quickly and with ease. Let's look at the tank sizes projected on the bathroom door. A pretty good fresh water capacity of 30 gallons, 22 gallons for gray is okay. 12 gallons for black, though, is a little small for a coach this size. And you do get both a black tank flush and macerator as standard. Plus, you can opt for heating pads for the tanks for $803. So all around a good setup. A couple will be able to boondock for a few days in this rig. Let's talk briefly about this coach's quality. I like what I saw. The quality is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's certainly not at the lower end of the spectrum either. The big pluses are that I didn't see any staples and stick framing to hold cabinets together. Staples and stick framing are a construction technique that some RV manufacturers use to cut down on costs. It involves taking pieces of wood or sticks and stapling them together to create the framework for cabinets. It's not a particularly sound way of constructing cabinetry, especially in an RV. 
that's subjected to constant vibrations and stresses from going down the road. But the cabinets in the Galleria do not use stick framing and staples. They're top notch. They can compete with those found in some of the most expensive RVs. The Galleria's cabinets use residential style drawer glides, solid maple hardwood for the cabinet styles, and true English dovetail drawer construction. All the cabinets are custom built for coachmen by a local Amish carpentry shop. Additionally, the Galleria features some of the best insulation in its class with hush mats over wheel wells, R38 reflective insulation under the floor, and available phase change insulation for the ceilings and walls. So a good build quality behind the scenes. Coachmen could improve their quality by using thicker memory foam on their sofa and ottoman cushions, and employing true positive locking mechanisms on their cabinet doors. But other than that, I really don't have anything bad to say about the build quality of this coach. If you're a current owner of a Galleria, we'd appreciate hearing from you your thoughts on its quality, especially after longer term use. So what's my final recommendation? Should you avoid the 24T, consider it, shortlist it, or buy it? I think you should consider it. If you're looking for a coach that has three captain's chairs up front and a rear sofa slash bed configuration, then the Galleria 24T just might tick all your boxes. It's priced competitively with the Winnebago Era 70B, but has the quality and fit and finish that can hold its own against the more pricey Roadtrek CS Adventurous. The only thing holding it back from a higher rating is its too short one-year warranty. Let me know if you agree with me in the comment section below. And if you like this video, you got to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little bell to be notified when new reviews are released. And if you want to support Honest RV Reviews, you can give me a one-time donation through PayPal. The link's in the video description below. And please, really don't feel guilty if you can't. Your watching is always good enough for me. That wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching Ultra Mobility Reviews, where you vote for the RVs that you want me to review. Watch out for the 360 degree video tour of the Galleria 24T dropping soon after this video releases. I'll see you soon, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.